Scan the nonfiction section at your local bookstore and you'll find heaps of books that look at personal productivity. But most people spend a lot of time working in groups. How can you improve the productivity of the group you work in? Teresa Jabor is a senior consultant with Mark Kamen and Associates. She joins us now with some ideas. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Group productivity is not the same as yes. personal productivity. What is what has it be different? Well, Bruce, if you take it personal productivity, you're dealing with one person and how they manage what they have to manage. As soon as you get uh, a number of individuals into a group, you get an instant case of unworkability uh, right. because they each have their habits. And those habits could kind of come together in what you could call group habits. And yes. Some of those group habits are not great for productivity. What would be some examples or what would groups look at that they might be doing that isn't as productive as it could be? Well, one thing is copying everyone in emails. Email is a yep. huge, you know, a huge area where people just blindly copy everyone in the group, whether they need to be copied or not. Uh, another bad habit of a work group uh, is in meetings, for instance. So there's email. If you just look at where people get together, mm -hmm. collaborate, there's meetings, there's emails. Uh, so in e uh, meetings, for instance, a uh, bad habit would be showing up without an agenda, right? showing up without something to write on. One of the ones that struck me is what you call ungrounded promises. This is not language that we use in the workplace very often. What do you mean by ungrounded promises and why does that affect productivity? Well, if you make a promise that's not grounded in reality, it's kind of a, a pie in the sky kind of promise, it does impact the productivity because other people on your team are counting on you to deliver when you said you would. And if your promise is not grounded, they're going to be very disappointed and will have trouble coordinating what they have to do with you. What are some of the questions that a group could ask of themselves to get at the habits that don't really work? What are some of the questions that you would ask to figure out what it is for your group? Well, one thing, so uh, the work group productivity is based on uh, material uh, developed by Mission Control Productivity. And one of the exercises that you know we do when we work with companies is we have them uncover for themselves where are they not being productive in the group so that they can actually start seeing it for themselves. Hmm. So the first piece is actually looking at what's not working, where is the unworkability, and have everyone really be able to acknowledge it and own it for themselves. Hmm. And then to get the cost of operating that way. And then in the second piece, we, we actually mentor a process where people actually create protocols and work habits that will greatly enhance productivity. Hmm. What would be some examples of those? Uh, a work habits that would greatly enhance productivity, yeah. for instance, would be um, when you're in a meeting, no side conversations. Hmm. You empower the person who's leading the meeting. Hmm. Uh, you know, when you're in a meeting, you don't check your, uh, your Blackberry or your cell phone. You don't go in and out of meetings. Uh, another a work practice that you might agree on is only copy people that need to be copied in the email. Another one might be don't interrupt people unless it's an absolute emergency because interruptions happen too frequently in the workplace. How do you go about having this kind of conversation with your group? And I ask because uh, there might be some people who are quite comfortable in the way the group operates or might be averse to any type of change. How do you broach that and communicate it in a way that people can hear you and don't lob roll that piece of paper at you? Yeah, well, like I said, I think it's, it's very important to go through the process with somebody who's actually trained to be able to mentor you through the process. And it's really having people get, you know, how it negatively impacts them, how the, how the bad work habits negatively impact them. And when people get that and get the impact on them, then they get interested in, well, what would it be like if we could really enhance our productivity? If we could have our meetings take half the time? If we could walk out of our meetings with clarity about who's doing what, when are they doing it? And so it's, it really is having people buy into a whole new way of communicating, collaborating, coordinating their actions. Very interesting. One final question. When you say have people get or understand the cost or the, or the consequences, what are those costs or what would, what would people be thinking about in answering that question? Well, you know, one of the costs, you know, I was working with a company in Toronto recently and one of the people there said, I get interrupted all the time. 
He said, it's very hard for me to keep up with my work because I'm constantly, and he's, the nature of his job is one of interruptions. So, you know, being interrupted, having a glut of email that's not relevant to you, so you mm -hmm. have to spend lots and lots of time kind of see, you know, going through it and looking to see, you know, what you need and what you don't need. Um, you know, have meetings that are a waste of time. Right. You know, people complain a lot about meetings being a waste of time. They do, and those are productivity eaters in and of themselves. Teresa, thank you very much. My pleasure, thank Great you. Great to see you. Teresa Jabour is a senior consultant with Mark Kamen and Associates.